Thank y'all for coming today. Today we're going to talk uh, specifically about the um, MicroJig 360 um, sled kit, zero play, and this is pretty neat. I don't say that often, but this actually is pretty neat and what you can do with it. And basically, what this allows you to do is take a piece of plywood and make it into a really nice sled. This is extremely adaptable. It makes a very nice sled for a table saw. It makes a very nice sled for a router table. It makes a very nice sled for a band saw. You get the work. This this work. This is my main saw. So it does great. Now another thing, the way this system is set up, this is the zero play that's going to sit in your miter slot. And this is going to uh, keep everything on the up and up. What you can also do is you can see that this is here. If I take, as I'm attaching this to the top, if I take these two screws out, I can turn this track completely. And now I've got a sled on this side of the fence, on this side of the blade. Why is this important? If I'm ever and tilt it, it's going to tilt to the left. So I want the sled on the right side of the blade so I can tilt and get a miter cut. If I like the sled over here in this area I want to work in, I can do it this side. So just by spinning this, I have access to both sides of the blade. Another thing I really, really like about this is in the directions you'll get from the uh, folks at uh, Microjig, they recommend an one eighth inch opening between the saw blade and the edge of the sled. I don't like that. I made mine a little oversized, so this edge right here is cut on my table saw. Right here is cut on my table saw. That's exactly where the blade is going to cut. There's no verbal clutter. This is it. Okay. What that gives me is a single point of measurement. If you want accurate measurements, this is what you want. What do I mean by that? I've got this really neat fence. And these are the materials, the extra stuff that comes with it. And these plans are in, if you buy this kit, the plans for this are in there. Now, as we all know, wanting to be very, very meticulous, we have a sled, we want it to be square if we're going to cut square cuts. So it moves all kinds of ways. This gives me a lot of versatility. But if I want this to be absolutely dead square, I can use uh, one gentleman's five cut method, and that works really well, especially if you've got a calculator. I can take this really expensive, guaranteed to be square woodpecker gauge, and I can put it right here, and I can bring it right now, and I can type in everything up. And now, this fence is absolutely dead square for my cut. How much easier is that than do a five cut method? It's extremely accurate. It's extremely accurate. Now, suppose I wanted to cut a 45. No problem. I get when I know that's dead flat at 45, and I do the same thing. This I would normally clamp across so it wouldn't move. And now I bring this up here. And I don't want to cut the fence, so I'm going to move it out a little bit.
Now, assuming your plywood straight, and plywood is normally straight, you can do this MDF. You really want to make sure. Now that's 45 degrees, exactly, because everything is measured off this. This is where the saw blade is going to cut. This is exactly 45 degrees to that cut line. That is a high degree of accuracy. Now, granted, you're going to have to buy out two jigs, and this is going to be as accurate as these are. So I would spend a little bit of extra money just to make sure you've got something that's guaranteed accurate, which is what that is. So this allows me now to do all kinds of neat stuff. I can take it off. I can still do other things. So this not only is a great sled, but it will also do other things. And then we're going to talk a little bit of how to make this. I've got this really nice piece of wood that's got these grooves in it. Okay. This off. What I can do, I'm going to make a 14 inch tall humidor and I want to cut a piece of wood that's 14 inches tall and I want it perfect. So when I cut the lid off, so now I have got, when I take this down to the fence, I've got a tall fence. This clamps into the Biesmeyer fence, put one on both ends. And now I've got a tall fence. So now is it sled, it's also a tall fence. And normally, if I was going to use this at all, I might have this out a little bit further, but you can see. This really is a neat thing to have. Now, suppose I come to Woodcraft and I find a beautiful piece of lumber. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I want to use it. The only problem with this beautiful piece of lumber is it's got a really ragged edge, both sides. And I want to cut it, and I want a bit, and it's kind of wide, and I want to cut it so I can put it on the, the joiner and later on the planer. I can take that really nasty. I can make a sled come down this way, lock it in place, and this is my fence on my table saw here. Now I can slide this whole thing on the fence. So I've got a... Uh, a sled that I can use to make a long cut in a piece of wood to make sure that it's square or something really twisted. I can lock it down and chop off pieces of it. It's safe. It's clamped. It can't go anywhere. I have just oodles and oodles of neat things that I can use this for. So now you start thinking about, well, what else can I use it for? I can use it like in here. If you're going to make styles for rails and doors, you can clamp right on here. And normally you'd cut this so that it was even with this, and then you know exactly where the router bit's going to cut. So again, this gives me oodles of options. So we want to make this. How do we do this? How do we make this sled? According to the instruction, you want to make these square points. Cut your first line four inches from this. Well, how do you find four inches from that? All measurements on our router table are to the center of the router bit, okay? The instructions tell you that needs to be a quarter inch bit. So how much do we have left over from a quarter inch? An eighth. So we know that eighth of an inch of this router bit is twice. So we make this three and seven eighths. Line it up. And now the fence is at the perfect distance. We lock it in place. Now, how high is this going to be? Well, we want it to be a certain height. How are we going to do that? Match fit makes this thing. You'll get it in their dado set. You'll get it in their clamping set. You can buy it by themselves. On this part, this is for the quarter inch drill bit for this. This is for the 14 inch drill bit for that. So all we do is bring this over, line this up, and then just lower that till it's flush with the table. Well, 
we're all set up. It's the right height. So now this comes over. And we just slide it right through. And then when we get done with this cut, we turn it over this way and we slide it right through. And then we get done with that cut and we turn it over this way and on and on and on. That's the easy part. Okay. Now, the next cut on this, because this is 16 by 20, is at 8 inches. 99.9% .9 of the router tables here, if I move this back to that distance, the fence is going to fall off the back of the table. And this is no exception. Now, 8 inches. Remember, you take into account... Take into account that eighth of an inch, so I still got my three quarters of an inch block. Now I get a four inch one. And what I want to do is bring this fence back enough. And bring this up. Now, most fences are your attach points is going to be off. So what do you do? Well, that's easy. You can take this fence off. You can put another fence across or a straight edge and just clamp it down with a regular set of clamps and just make a temporary fence, okay? But once you get this set up, you lock everything down. And now we put this through again. And off we go, same thing. And then do it on the other side. So once we do that, We've laid out the grid. And why we want to use that quarter inch bit to lay out the grid, it's going to take out the bulk of it because a dovetail bit is an inherently weak bit because it's shaped like that, especially right here at that connection. That's the weakest part of the dovetail bit. And we'll pass this around and I'll show you. Right where it pinches in, is the weakest part of this bit. Now this bit has been designed to be a little bit stronger, plus it's got a little flare right here to round over the edges so the edges aren't real sharp. So this is what we want to use. Again, we got no problem. First thing I do is <clears throat> uh, you take this one out, and you put the other one, or you can Go back into your three quarter inch measurement, and then you can change it. Um, you can tell you the truth is this one I did on the first time for the eight inch one. I just had a mark right here, and all I did was even it up with the mark and just went on and it worked fine. But you can set up this fence, take this out, put the uh, the bit in for the uh, dovetail. Again, the height of it, you'd raise it up to this right here. So it can't miss. And off you go. And it does it. This, this was incredibly easy. And if you now, the ones where it says side out, side out, that's where the actual cut was. So I don't think these are square. I know these are square because I've measured them. That distance here is the same as this distance here. So, what else can you do with this? Well, again, we've got our nice little fence here. Now, one thing you'll notice since this moves all over every place, much difference putting tape up here with measurements on it. You can if you wanted to, and that would always be from this edge or whatever it is you've got. So if you wanted to come down five inches, you can have a mark there, that's no problem. Um, you can recess it or you can get sticky measuring tape and just put it right on. But then you're looking here and you're trying to measure something here and you can do it if you wanted to. Another accurate way is to put it here and then you can really say. Um, you'll notice that I didn't round this over to give a groove for sawdust, right? Because I've got these. I want to make a nice space that the sawdust will go in and I'll get a flush 
fit here, I'll just set this over one of these groups. And I've got a built-in sawdust collection. And again, let's play with this. So I'll come in here. Now, these attachments work well, but you'll find out that when you tighten them really tight and then you loosen the tops, the tops loosen, but the thing still is tucked up tight to the wood. This will pop right out and she slides real easy. Extra piece of plywood, and you can see the little marks they got. We'll just slide this over. Now this one I did leave a little high on purpose. There we go. Now we've got our stop. Now it makes it very, very easy to duplicate cuts. Really easy to duplicate cuts. If I've got this on the other side of the blade and I've got if I, I can do box sides with no problem. Everything's the same. Could make a cut, flip it around, touch it here, cut it again. It's exactly the same. So this does make repetitive, accurate work easy. I mean, I, I was, I had so much fun playing with this after I built it before I came in here. I was doing all kinds. Of, I got stuff cut up in 45s in my shop in different sizes. I don't know what I'm going to do with, but you get this. To make this work, you're going to need to buy of these. You need to buy this. This is not in the 360 kit, but they make it work. You saw how easy this did with those long grooves. You, you really need this. You can buy this by itself. You can buy a kit that's already got it in. If you buy this kit, you're going to get this, plus you're going to get the... Uh, 14 degree but if you want to make life easier for yourself you want to groove this out with a quarter inch bit you can either buy a quarter inch i use a quarter inch spiral or you can buy this one doesn't matter uh, if you buy these things one of the things i want to with me uh, where's the little router bit okay Yeah. This is cockeyed. If you look inside this, there's grooves in the plastic. So when you put this across, that's locked in there now. Won't come out. Want to open it? It's pretty neat. If you don't know that, you start saying bad words. You get ready to get a hammer and break it. The secret of this system, ooh, it tried to go in the hole, is this. This is that bar that's on the bottom, okay? And I'm gonna pass this around. What I want you to notice, normally this comes in two pieces, or what goes and holds this together. So you wanna just put them in, you don't wanna snug, otherwise this locks in, okay? But you'll notice, if you look really close, that both of these things have arrows. Naturally, you want to point them in the same direction. If you're standing in front of your saw, you want them pointing away from you. They're designed to run at the bottom of the miter saw. They're designed to run at the top. Get two nickels, put them in the miter slot, stick this in, and then what you're going to do is you are going to hold one finger and push with the other until this touches side to side. It needs to move freely, but there's no wiggling to the side. Once you get it that way, tighten this one first, then tighten the other two, you're locked in. You'll notice there is also three other screw holes in here. Just pass this around so you take a look. Those are for these screws in the top. Okay? How they want you to do this is half inch holes down to 1 16th 
That's about this far from the bottom. And then a quarter inch. So that's easy. Take a uh, five sixteenths, uh, I mean a half inch fortune rather, take it down all the way around, then take your quarter, put it in the same little hole, then you've got nice little through holes, you're ready to go. Okay. I've noticed that since the screw itself is a little bit less than that, this gives you wiggle room. You can move that around before you lock it. Which means that if I turn this now, I need to be back on my table saw. And why I need to be back on my table saw? Because this is the edge. So what I'll do is this will be in the miter slot. This will be loose. It's got some wiggle up. So it touches the blade, then lock these in. And you're good. So you don't have to remeasure. It's meant to be loose in there so you can move it around a little bit. If you're measuring from the blade like I do, it's the piece of cake. You just bring everything back to the blade and then tighten it down. It's in the miter slot. It's not going to move. So you're good to go that way. So uh, I like that about it. It's easy to adjust. It only makes sense to adjust it, though, when you're at the place you started the measurement and begin to my saw. Table saws and router bit, uh, router table tops and band saws, there is no fixed standard for where the miter slot is. If you go to the saw stop, you'll find out that the miter slot here is closer to the blade than the miter slot here. If you're standing in front of a Powermatic 66, you'll find out that the miter slot here is exactly the same difference from this side of the blade as this is from this side of the blade. It's that. So, you know that with the Powermatic, the way the miter slot is, if I put in a thin kerf blade, it's going to be off 1 of an inch on this side if I use the eighth inch to make this. So, miter, measure, measure the slot. And I always, I do it like from the, from the middle, dead middle. And you'll be amazed the difference between the different types of machines. For example, if I set this up for the Powermatic, it won't work on the either the saw stop. Either I'll be cutting another slide of it or I'll have a great big gap. So make this, when you make this, it's for your particular machine. And rather than use one sled for everything, I, I'm going to make a sled just for the band. So I'm going to make a sled just for the router table. And this is going to be my, and plus I'm probably going to make the long. All you need is one long one for one of the big high fences because then always it's not a high fence and you can flip it down. And since you're not gonna put one of these inserts in it, it, it works against the fence. And that's what you got for locking a piece of wood down that you wanna get a nice sharp edge on that's nasty, that you don't have a sharp edge now. If you've got uh, a rough edge on both sides, this is the easy way to take it down. And it's much easier than trying to lift the whole honking thing and, and make it through a joiner. You can put on a sled lock and then off you go, you're done. What other neat stuff do they have and what can you expect? When you get, you get one of these bars. When you get a regular, they make just the regular bar and all you get is one bar and just the screws and uh, uh, washers to put it on. With the 360, you get the instructions for making the sled, plus you get these things that allow me to attach a fence and a stop. With, uh, these are the other screws. These are, and these are Phillips. They don't use the wrench that comes with it. And this is what goes down through that to go into the, uh, the zero, uh, zero play bar. So you got everything that you need. You need to buy, again, I told you about the data. Let's go to this data. This is something else that they have. And I've got one of these. This gives you this, this, and one of these uh, clamps. What does this do? This, you're going to clamp this to the fence like this. So this is going to be in your table saw. 
you're going to clamp it down on the fence of your table saw and you've got this one, two, and three. What they want you to do is <clears throat> you want to take, and this is three inches here, you want to bring your fence up so this uh, touches the um, uh, outside tooth of your table saw blade. Then this one, you move and you want this to be even with the other side of the tooth of the table saw blade. So this is the width of your table saw blade. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use this one. If I've got a piece of wood that I want to cut the data on, I'm going to adjust number three until it's flush with number one, with the piece of wood in there. Lock it in. Now what I can do is I take this, move this back to wherever I want that dado to be. Okay, because all I'm doing now is when I push the wood through, I've got this set up so that I'll have an inside cut, outside cut, and then we'll do this in there. It sounds difficult when you watch the video, it's a piece of cake. You're going to get one of these. And this is actually useful, um, especially for picture frames and stuff like that, if you want to do something neat. All this stuff works together. Again, even though you bought this for dados, there's your things to, to cut slots. So this is, this is neat. I bought one of these. I played with this. It worked real Let you decide. You can also get this thing. This is a double pack. Okay? Two. You want to make a big sled and you want to have two runners or you want to have runners on both sides and do a normal sled, you can do it with this as a piece of cake. You're also going to get something that none of these other things have, and that's these two. These are miter stops. And what they do is they will go into the miter slot and you tighten it down and now nothing can get through that miter slot. You've locked it in place. What would you want to do that for? Well, if you want to measure, you can lock stuff down, you can push stuff in, you can push it around here, put your stuff in and go and then take them out. But this, just an extra, just a miter stop. I, I can't think of any other thing you'd use it for, but they're included here. The only place you can get them is here. So if you didn't want these, you can buy two of these separate. This is $35. Uh, the single one is $16. So this, if you didn't want that, buy two of these, you get the two slots and you're saved $3. These five dollars. You go, ah, let me tell you about these. They work in Festool, they work in regular tracks, and they work in this. They work in Festool, they work in regular tracks, and they work in this. They're the only ones that do that. Also, Ellen screw right here. You can take that out, take this, turn it around, and now you can bring it in this way and the clamp will be on this side. There are some clamping in situations where you actually want that. Because if I'm clamping on this side and the metal's over here, I can cut really close to this without this being in the way. Because if you'll see, So if I want to cut something near that slot, that's going to be in the way. Also, sometimes it's easier by coming from this side and you're good. Another thing I like about this, imagine a big piece of wood like this, just about that long, 
and I've got it in, I've attached it to my workbench. And now if I want to take a piece of wood, If I got one on the other side and lock it in, I can lock a piece of wood on my workbench and I can plane it. I can take a hand plane and plane it. I can do all kinds of stuff with it. If I am trying to put a router, use a router to machine out a mortise, I can lock this right into the table. And now if that's flush with the table, I've got a really solid platform for a router fence and using that router exactly where I want to cut a trough. This really allows you a flexibility with clamping that you had to buy a, usually a Festool MFT table to use. Now you don't. And you can make this exactly how you want it. You can make a whole bloody tabletop of this. Imagine a falling, a, a waterfall table, how the end goes over, it's the same. You do the same thing with this. You can now take a piece of wood at 45 and clamp it in and you can take a corresponding piece of wood down here that's mitered at 45. You got stop blocks. You can put them together, clamp it in and now they're flush. Well, what good does that do? Suppose you wanted to do it through mine. You can take a Festool domino and you can put two dominoes in here, glue them in place. You use different color woods. You actually show it off. You can take a, a, a dowel you can drill two dowel holes in here, put those in. So you're reinforcing a miter. It makes it really easy to reinforce a miter. You know, no crazy spline jigs or anything else. That. You just lock this in. Same thing on this side, and you can bring them up. Now, how do you do the rest of the box? Well, you can do two of them right here, can't you? Then when you put the box together, you can flip it up here, and I can have a little fence up this way to hold it tight here. And I can do the same thing. There's lots of stuff that we can do with this, and we're just limited by our imagination. What makes it work, though, is the whole system. If you've got the router system, you can do this. It really needs a router table. You, you can do it handheld. It's not going to be pretty, and it's really easy to 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 lose this locks it very very well. You really want the support, especially when you're doing something eight inches away. Um, you're going to get all kinds of neat accessories, stuff that you can build on. Uh, again, you can do. I, I can make special things to go on the fences that are at a ninety degree if I want to. Well, what can I? What do you mean by that? Well, suppose use this on a drill press, make a drill press table. I can make something like this that I could put holes exactly where I wanted to drill in and just slide it through the thing and lock it in place. And then I'm good as far as uh, precision holes. I did this on a drill press with a, with a table with a fence. Made it real easy to line up the holes. You can do the same thing with your own drill press fence. There's just the oodles of stuff. If I have this, if I put a groove underneath here, just like these, then I could come underneath this and hook it to things, like a bandsaw fence or a jig on a bandsaw to cut circles. I can lock it to the thing with clamps underneath. So this expands all kinds of possibilities, not for holding wood still, but for holding this still on the sheet. And again, it all comes back with these grooves. If you follow this as far as the height, quarter inch, 14 degree dovetail, half and half, and this is a half inch too, you're golden. All this opens up because these will fit. And again, you can turn these around. Um, it's, it's not that hard and you're going to find yourself making little but it works. Math is your friend. And now, if you're going to pick drill bits or bits and you're going to have to take it out, pick 
quarter inch sizes. Quarter. Okay, what's half of three eighths? Yeah. So three sixteenths. What's it go up to half inch? We got a quarter. You got five eighths of an inch. It starts to get wonky, but if you keep a quarter, half, full, it's easy. It's easy because you're just dividing by two. So when you do whole numbers like that, it works great. And again, all router measurements is measured from the exact center of the bit. So when you have this dovetail bit, okay, that's half inch here at the tips. What's a half inch? quarter. Okay. So if I take this and just add another eighth of an inch to what I've already got, it's perfect line lineup for the dovetail. So that's math and woodworking can be your friend. Closest thing to having everything that you need is this. What this has is it's got two clamps. It's got one dovetail bit, and it's got these different size uh, stuff that runs in that you attach your jigs to. The one we got here that come with it, they're all one size. This has three different sizes, and the sizes aren't the size of the plastic that goes in the groove. It's the depth of the screw, how far it pops up. So in this particular one, since we're making a fence, it's got this edge to it. It had to be a little bit longer. Um, so this comes with all three sizes, plus it comes with that dado, this thing. That's so useful and all the, every stuff match fit. So this is great because you've got that. So this is the closest to everything. Um, if you buy the 360, which is what I liked, I had, you're going to get this. You're going to get these little green things. But you get no router bits and you get no clamps. So the, the easiest thing to do is just buy two different things and I'll go off they go. If I wanted everything, then basically I'm buying, if I buy this and this, I get everything I need. If I buy this and this, I get everything I need. Can I add something in there to make it even better? Yeah, I can add a quarter inch router. I really, anytime you cut dovetails, and it doesn't matter for the any time you cut dovetails, you should really plow it first uh, with a bit that is going to take out the bulk, but not more. This dovetail bit is bigger than a quarter inch clearing bit, but clearing that, that wood out there is really significant. It makes the bit work flawlessly. You will be easier to push this wood through with the dovetail bit after you've used the quarter inch than the quarter inch bit into the raw wood. That you got to push. I mean, the dovetail is, is just effortless. And uh, it's, it works well. Most people don't realize is that this is farther. So all you have to do is take this off, measure your eight inches out, clap, just clamp a temporary fence there, clamp it, clamp it, make your cut, and then take it away. If you've got a router table that's attached to a, a table saw, you're golden because you got that great big table saw space right there. You can go for, I mean, you can do big sheets if you want to. Um, if you're going to make a long, the board yay long, and you're going to have those things to use as either a high fence or to use it as a whole long piece of lumber that you're going to cut a straight edge on, then uh, you most likely you can either use something like this or you just put a little little uh, clamp on there and just take a router bit through. But you'll, you'll find all kinds of neat ways to do this. And you can put these grooves on both sides. Now, if you're going to use this as a bench, you're going to make a bench top and you want a bench top, okay? This is all predicated on three quarter inch stock to make this stuff, okay? You're going to find out if you've got a bench top as big as this, 
that because you hogged out so much wood that over this distance it's going to sag. I'm going to use this as a bench top, put another three-quarter piece of something underneath it and attach it, and then you're golden. But that's the only caveat. If it's long, you weaken the wood. I like MDF on jigs that um, I don't have to glue the jig to attach it so to make it better. For example, MDF on this piece of cake. It's cleaner. You get a much cleaner cut. Uh, it's more accurate. However, it doesn't take screws well at all. Well, that's okay on this because these screws are through screws and it's just clamping. So I'm not worried about threads or threads biting in, in this. But this glue line right here, this is clamped and this clamped out all is holding glue. MDF, because of its nature, I don't think glues as well as plywood does. Um, MDF is also very dusty, and MDF is very, very, very susceptible to moisture. So if you keep your shop air conditioned or you keep the, the moisture level fairly consistent, you're good. If it can be really hot and humid in your shop, the MDF over the years is going to is going to degenerate. It's going to swell. This will stay uh, put longer. No, careful with glue. If you're doing anything glue up, if you use a water-based glue, you'll, you'll trash the MDF. You have to use either epoxy-based or anything that's not water-based, because water is its Achilles heel. So it's stronger. It's really strong. It holds together. It doesn't chip, but over time, it'll die. So I use plywood. I've tried them both. I still use MDF a lot. If I'm like uh, big boxes, anything, I've got a big sandpaper on and um, and I use the, the spray adhesive like used for photographs and sand like crazy it makes everything flat at the same time and then peel it off put the MDF away but uh, it, it's got its space but it, it's it, especially if if your shop is in your house you're probably good if your shop is an outbuilding like mine is it won't last Baltic birch is one of the best I've seen as if you want to throw caution to the winds and do, you know, to get finish. Finish birch for every like four or five plies of Baltic, finish birch will have 20. Guaranteed no void. Guaranteed to be double the price of Baltic birch. I like it. Um, as far as putting finishes on your jigs, normally I don't. They're jigs. I hang them on the wall. Then they have to look nice. Now, if it's something that's going to slide, yeah, I might put wax underneath here, make it slide a little bit easier than a table saw. But yeah, it's up to you. Get chip out. That's any other questions? Yes, sir. This this whole thing imagines you're using three quarter inch ply. They know that. Yeah, they know. That. Okay. But they're just telling you to use three quarter inch ply. They know exactly what you're going to get. Okay, so three quarter inch ply now is not three quarter inch. Yep, you're exactly right. Okay. It's one thirty second or one sixty fourth inch smaller. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that they know that. Okay. Just know that. That's why they mentioned if you're going to make this a bench top, you, you need to have support underneath because you weakened it here because of that. No, you're not hurting a thing. This is going to lay flat on the table saw. But it works great. It does a good job. And um, I've tried it. I've done the the guy's, um, I can't remember his name, and I wish I could, the five cut method. I've used this. And then I've used the five cut. And this is incredibly accurate. Is it perfect? No, but it's close enough to perfect. You never know the difference. And 
I highly recommend a really good set of something you know is because then if I want to do 45s or I want this to be after five, again, I, everything is measured off. I know exactly where the blades are going to cut. That's the secret. If you reference all your measurements off one side, you're golden. The second you start adding another size, yeah, problematic at best. Because what you're doing with, with the normal method is you're making this cut. This is not set. And you're moving stuff around and you're going to adjust here. I don't want to adjust here. I want to do all my adjustments from here. And then it's good because no matter what this rest of this looks like, if I'm exactly 90 degrees from that blade cut, I'm right where I want to be. There it is. Now this means that if you want this to be on the money, then you're, it's harder to do this when I've got more over here because now I've got this slot. Now I'm trying to get stuff in there to measure. It's a little bit more difficult. But when I've got a clean edge, it's a piece of cake. And anything else you can think of. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Come take a look at this. Move this around. Do whatever you want.